What's up guys? It's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com and today this video is going to be for beginners who have done a ton of research and they're about to get their first tarantula. Now I know it can be incredibly exciting and a lot of uh, adrenaline rushing when you've done the research, you think you're ready for a new tarantula and you see a tarantula for sale sign either on arachnoboards boards or maybe at your local pet store or maybe on a tarantula breeder's site. Um, and it's the species that you want and everything is perfect and everything. But do you actually know how to spot a healthy tarantula? Um, and maybe if you're going to a reputable breeder, maybe it's not such an issue because they have a reputation to protect and they're gonna give you a good spider. But if you're going into a store or at a convention or something like that, we are actually able to observe the tarantula in person. Um, there are things that you definitely need to look out for. The good thing I will say about going to a reputable breeder is that a lot of them do have these live on arrival guarantees, which means that you're going to get a healthy spider and that's going to be intact when you get the shipment, if everything goes well. And when they do have these guarantees, if the tarantula was either sick or passed from a circumstance that was not your fault or not the shipping the shipper's fault or whatever, um, then they will refund you or replace your spider. So that can be good um, when you're buying from a reputable online company. But if you are going to a convention or a pet store, there are several things that you need to look for. And um, overlooking any of these things could mean that you're taking home a sick or unhealthy tarantula. So the first thing I think you need to be aware of is the hydration level of the tarantula. So if a tarantula is recently molted, their abdomens do tend to be um, a little bit smaller or disproportionate to their body, maybe even just a little bit um, tiny looking. But if they haven't recently molted, their abdomen should be pretty full, not extremely round or extremely full, but they definitely shouldn't be shriveled. That's what you don't want. You do not want to buy a tarantula whose abdomen is shriveled because it could definitely be a sign of severe dehydration and um, when it gets to that point, you may not be able to save it. You want to be able to hopefully look at your tarantula from all angles. You want to look at its legs, its feet. You want to look at even its underside. You want to look at its abdomen from the front, the back, everything. You wanna make sure that you're getting a 360 view and you wanna look for anything such as injuries, wounds, um, any sort of growths on the tarantula that might not look okay, um, any sign of infection or anything that looks a little abnormal. And now, I will say that a broken limb or you know a smaller limb does not necessarily need to be a deal breaker because tarantulas do regenerate their limbs when they molt, but you, do, you definitely wanna see how bad this is and if that might cause molting issues in the future for the tarantula. So you wanna be aware of that. Another thing is you want to make sure that it has clear glands and this one's a little bit of a weird one and something that I think that tarantula owners may not really think about when they're first starting out, but you want to take a look at that tarantula butt. You want to look at the spinnerets and uh, kind of, you know, glance at the anal glands a little bit if you can, um, just to make sure there's no buildup around them because impaction is something that can happen to tarantulas. It's basically tarantula constipation. And um, if that area is not clean and clear, and if there's buildup, you might not be able to save it. And it might just, you know, that might be fatal for it because that's a pretty um, serious thing for tarantulas. And now there was a great video um, of Tom Rand treating his impacted tarantula. Unfortunately, that tarantula died, but I will leave that link um, to that video. Um, in case any tarantula owners are dealing with this issue because there are some things you can do you know such as trying to clean the area with some warm water to kind of soften the buildup but you don't want to buy a tarantula in this condition because you don't know if it can be saved another thing you want to look at is making sure that its fangs and mouth are clean now you might not be able to turn the spider over in the pet store or at the convention but um, to the best of your ability you want to be able to look at around the fangs and mouth area if possible um, and if you're at a convention, um, the seller might actually help you out with that or have it in a clear container where you can look underneath it. But what you're looking for is you wanna make sure that the area is clean and you also wanna make sure there are no sorts of white dots or spots or anything that's moving around in that area because something that tarantulas can get is this parasite called nematodes and that's where they usually hang out is around the tarantula's mouth. So you do not want your tarantula to have these things. They're very hard to treat um, and that can be a fatal thing too. 
Another reason you want to look at the fangs is because you want to make sure that its fangs are intact. I mean, this sounds crazy, but I have definitely heard of several instances where a tarantula owner has brought a tarantula home, you know, got it from somebody at a convention or wherever, and then to find that they didn't have any fangs or that their fangs were broken and then had to spend several months nursing this tarantula, hand feeding it every single day or every week or whatever until it molted and luckily regrew the fangs. So you don't want to put yourself automatically in that position by accidentally um, purchasing a tarantula who had deformed or didn't have any fangs. Another thing to look for is healthy looking fur. Tarantulas are very much like cats and the healthiest ones groom themselves a lot. Spidey can spend hours every single week grooming herself. She loves to do it all day, every day. Um, so you want to notice the quality of fur, of course, and you want to look for any unnatural bald spots. I will say that, you know, tarantulas tend to get bald spots when they're in pre-molt, but if they are looking unnatural and not like a pre-molt bald spot, then you want to see if maybe that tarantula has experienced um, a lot of stress and or is kicking hairs a lot. And now it's not necessarily a bad thing because tarantulas do experience stress and some of them do kick hairs and tend to be a little bit more irritable than others. But like anything else on the tarantula's body, you just want to note it and make sure that it's not because of a growth or infection or anything like that. Just note any bald spots on the spider. And you also want to note the weight and shape of the tarantula. Um, you do not want a tarantula who is overweight or underweight. Underweight it can be you know, a sign of neglect or dehydration, which can cause a lot of other health issues. And being overweight is another thing too. Um, having an obese tarantula, that can easily be fixed by just a regular, more healthy eating schedule. But these spiders are also prone to um, being more fragile and being injured if they fall and stuff like that. So that's something to be aware of. Um, but also note that tarantulas who are about to molt tend to be a little bit more round and plump in the abdomen. And if you have a female, she could also be pregnant. So um, that is something to also think about. But, you know, in the background, I think that tarantula weight is something that, you know, if a spider is a little bit fat, it's really okay. <laughs> It's not a reason not to get them and you know usually when they molt or when they're put on a better feeding schedule that will usually fix itself but i would say that the severe underweight tarantula that could definitely cause problems for you another thing you want to look at is movement you want to make sure all the limbs work so not only that they look intact but that they actually work well in the way that they're supposed to so if you can just get that tarantula to move around a little bit either by a little nudge or a tap on the glass um, you know, if they don't feel like moving, then I wouldn't suggest making them move or force them to do anything that they don't want to do. But if possible, if you could observe that tarantula moving around, that would be great because you want to make sure that all of those limbs work and that there's no um, injuries that maybe you might have missed. And then if you are buying from an experienced breeder who has raised the tarantulas, if they're captive bred, I would definitely ask about the molting, mating, and um, birth history. You know, how old is this tarantula exactly? Um, is it a male or female? They can usually tell you the sex. Um, has it ever mated before? If it's a female, um, when was the last molt? When was the last feeding? These are all good questions to ask because it will gauge you not only the age of the tarantula and you know what what might be possible for it in its life with you, um, but it gives you an, an also bigger picture, a more complete picture of its health and like the life that it lived before it possibly went to you. So those are good, all good questions to ask. And um, I would be worried if any uh, tarantula owner who was into captive breeding and knew the history of the spider, if they couldn't tell you that, I would be worried about that. So yeah, we only wanna buy from reputable breeders and people who really care about these animals. And that's why I would suggest not ever buying from a local pet store, if possible. I would suggest going to an exotic pet store or a convention or an online breeder, someone who has a reputation and someone who is well versed in these animals. Because um, if you are buying from people who don't care about these animals, you don't know what you're really getting, um, especially if you don't know these signs of health from a tarantula. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you start off on the right foot by first 
purchasing a healthy tarantula so that you have an easier time keeping them healthy. I hope that this makes you feel more prepared um, if you are thinking of getting your first tarantula. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have any other indicators of health, um, if you have experience with tarantulas. Um, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing. I put out videos every single week about tarantulas. And I also have a Tarantula Tuesday newsletter that comes out every week, and you can find that link to sign up in the description below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, um, and thank you for caring about tarantula health and um, how to actually choose a healthy tarantula. So that next time you see tarantula for sale somewhere, you can feel more prepared and that you can make the best decision for you and your future tarantula and your life together. So. I will see you guys next week. Have a great one and talk to you later.